Wow. Good morning. My name is Lisa Rosenmetsch, and I have the great honor to be the Dean of the Columbia University School of General Studies. Oh. Or GS, as we all know it. Welcome to the very special class day ceremony celebrating the accomplishments of the extraordinary GS classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. Please, please, please be seated. I want to share with you as I look out into the room and see so many of our amazing students that during this pandemic, during these last two years, I have dreamed of this day when we could celebrate the incredible achievements of you, our students, your achievements both inside and outside the classroom. And as promised, here we are today to celebrate all that you brought to the Columbia undergraduate classroom. With your intellectual curiosities, diversity, life experiences, hard work, and love for our treasured GS community. I am pleased to welcome Columbia University Presidents Lee C. Bollinger and Dean of the Arts and Sciences Amy Hungerford and all the faculty members who have been your incredible teachers, mentors, and champions. Please take a moment to acknowledge the amazing faculty here of the Arts and Sciences. I am especially pleased to welcome deans and faculty from our partner institutions where we have our dual and joint degree programs. From Liss College at the Jewish Theological Seminary, please welcome Dean Amy Kalmanowski. From our international partner, Sciences Po, please welcome President Matthias Vichara, Dean Stephanie Baum, and Acting Vice President for International Affairs, Kate Vivian. From the City University of Hong Kong, please welcome Professor Yumin Yan. Finally, from Trinity College Dublin, please welcome Professor Emma Stokes, Vice President for Global Engagement, and Professor Zulika Rogers. I would like to extend a special welcome to our class day speaker, Dia Gracias Nizan Kiza, GS Class of 2021. I also would like to welcome members of the GS Board of Visitors, particularly our board chair, Allison Fillmore, Chair Emeritus, Larry Lawrence, our GS Alumni Association, and all of the GS alumni who have joined us today. I would like to give a special congratulations to Pavan Surapaneni, the vice chair of our board, who received the Columbia Alumni Medal in 2021. I would also like to recognize your amazing advising deans and all of the GS team who work hard on your behalf every day. 
Finally, I extend a very special welcome to all the family and friends who are here today or joining us virtually through live stream. I know how important you are to each and every student who is celebrating here today. And I know this is an incredibly meaningful moment for you too. Please, graduates, stand up and thank the people who supported you or people who are joining live stream. Okay, please, please be seated. The end of this academic year, marked by today's class day, is the official beginning of the 75th anniversary of the Columbia University School of General Studies. The creation of Columbia GS 75 years ago represents a milestone in the evolution of undergraduate education at Ivy League universities. There are two major factors that make Columbia GS unique, and you all know them well. First, we actively recruit students who have taken an untraditional path and integrate them fully into our distinguished, rigorous undergraduate program. Second, we are the incubator for innovative dual and joint BA programs that offer students a unique opportunity to engage with cutting edge international education. I am a proud graduate of the, our flagship joint program with Liz College at the Jewish Theological Seminary. The joint program established 68 years ago is the innovative model used to develop Columbia GS's four international joint and dual degree programs. From the classes of 2020, 21, and 22, we have 100 graduates from the joint program with Liss College. We also have 299 students from the classes of 2020, 21, and 22 graduating from our dual and joint degree international programs with Sciences Po, City University of Hong Kong, Tel Aviv University, and Trinity College, Dublin. Columbia GS and all of Columbia University is extremely proud that we find at our school nearly 450 veterans of the U.S. military. <laughs> 300 from the classes of 2020, 21, and 22, and additionally 51 veterans of foreign militaries are part of this year's graduating class. We, we are, without a doubt, the gold standard for undergraduate veteran education in the United States. Whether Columbia GS students are first-generation college students, performing artists, parents, chefs, fashion models, filmmakers, or community college graduates, musicians, entrepreneurs, international students, or students who have overcome challenging life circumstances, they receive the same superb education as all other Columbia undergraduates, and they excel. Members of the classes of 2021 20, and 22, I hope you appreciate how valuable you and your fellow GSers have been to the intellectual life of Columbia. You represent the cutting edge of American and international undergraduate education, and you have proven yourselves through your academic accomplishments and your dedication to one another and Columbia, we are privileged to count you as lifelong members of the Columbia intellectual and alumni communities. <laughs> Under President Lee C. Bollinger's leadership, 
Columbia stands at the very top rank of great research universities, distinguished by academic excellence, historic institutional development, an innovative and sustainable approach to global engagement, which we count our dual degrees as part of, and unpresented levels of alumni involvement and financial stability. During his tenure, President Bollinger conceived and led the university's most ambitious expansion in over a century with the creation of the magnificent and vibrant Manhattanville campus in West Harlem. Lee Bollinger is also a committed educator, continuing to teach, and I'm sure some of you have taken his class as an undergraduate course on the First Amendment, even while he leads this great university. His support for the students and the mission of Columbia School of General Studies has been unwavering, and he has even most recently at one of our board meetings coined the term the genius of GS. It is my privilege and deep honor to introduce to you the 19th president of Columbia University, Lee C. Bollinger. Thank you very much, uh, Lisa. Columbia School of General Studies is incredibly fortunate to have Lisa Rosenmetsch as its dean. She understands. <laughs> she understands what makes this community of students and alumni so remarkable. Over the course of the last few years, she has launched a new dual degree program with Tel Aviv University, increased, increased alumni engagement substantially, and strengthened financial aid. She and her team have also weathered the pandemic with incredible skill and compassion by embracing ways to educate and engage students and alumni. Lisa and her administration deserve our greatest admiration and thanks. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> to the members of the classes of 2022, 2021, and 2020 who are with us this morning, I offer my congratulations. To their families and friends, know that everyone on this podium is celebrating alongside you and these graduates and soon to be graduates. I will speak to everyone in a longer address at Columbia's commencement on Wednesday. So for today, I must be brief. As we gather here today on the 75th anniversary of the founding of General Studies, I would like to say a few words about its genius. Columbia School of General Studies embraces an important and distinct vision of access in higher education through its dedication to the education of non-traditional students. Here, you, our students, are welcome because you have the backgrounds you do, because you understand how much we understand how much you have to offer this university community by being part of it. You include those enrolled in dual degree programs who expand our international engagement. You include community college transfers and athletes and artists who have had varied and valuable life experiences. And of course, you include military veterans who have served this country with honor and distinction. Through your presence and your achievements, you are upending facile ways of thinking about aptitude, ability, and potential. You are also bringing new energy to the phrase, the best and the brightest. We could not be prouder or less surprised. Columbia School of General Studies remains the only school of its kind in the country. And it serves as a model for peer institutions pushing everyone to understand the value of learning, the value of admitting non-traditional students to their undergraduate programs. It's a trend 
that I hope we will see more of in the years and decades ahead. Universities have been going through a period of profound change over the course of the last two decades, reassessing old ways of thinking about the role of the academy in the world and adapting to fit the needs of the moment. General Studies has been doing this in its own way since its founding nearly 75 years ago. We are about the same age. I'm a little older. The results speak for themselves. So you've been way ahead of the curve. We are incredibly proud of you, the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. The last few years have been difficult for all of us in different ways. You have weathered them and completed your studies at one of the most challenging institutions in the world and at one of the most difficult and perplexing moments in history. You should feel enormously proud. On behalf of the entire university community, please accept my warmest congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you at the university-wide commencement. Thank you. Thank you, President Bollinger. Matthias Bichara was appointed president of Sciences Po and administrator of the National Foundation for Political Science in November 2021. A graduate of Sciences Po, he started his career as chief of staff to the prefect of the Bacardi region in 2010. Uh, President Vichara joined the Paris City Council as Deputy Director of the Mayor's Office before taking the role of Chief of Staff two years later. He was in charge of the city's international policy and crisis management and responsible for overseeing all municipal policies and services, including university policies. In 2016, President Vichara joined the SNCF as deputy CEO in charge of strategy and communication. He served as secretary general of Danone from 2019 to 2021. We are so thrilled to welcome President Matthias Bichara. This is something this is something. Dear President Bollinger, dear Provost Boyce, dear Vice President Ungerford, dear Dean Rosenmetsch, dear Dean Balm, dear members of the faculty and administration, dear family members, and most importantly, dear graduates and alumni. It is for me a great privilege and a delight to be with you today as we celebrate together the classes of 2020 2021 and 2022. It is in particular a joy to be with you in person and not in our respective Zoom boxes after what has been particularly difficult years for us all within university communities. Thank you so much, Dean Rothenmetsch, for your warm and generous welcome. We had the pleasure to celebrate together yesterday the 10th anniversary of our fantastic dual BA program and I can only reiterate today what a truly unique opportunity this ambitious and innovative program represents for our students. Thank you once again to GS and to Columbia University for the adventure that we embarked on together with Sciences Po 10 years ago. Dear General Studies graduates, each and every one of you has come a long way. In joining GS, you all took a brave step that of choosing a school where innovative programs are made possible and where extraordinary life stories are welcomed and most of all cherished. Among you, there are students that are, I must confess, particularly dear to us at Sciences Po, the students of the Sciences Po Columbia dual degree. Thank you. What is particular is that you chose to have not just one, but two alma maters, 
and you chose to leave your native country to spend two years in a small French town. If, <laughs> even if, even if, some of you didn't speak a word of French. Congratulations for that. <laughs> Obviously, there were difficulties to be faced and challenges to overcome. But you grew into mature young adults capable of achieving academic success and discovering who you are as young citizens. You then had to take another step by coming to Colombia and starting a new academic experience. You moved away from the peniche to come and sit at the whispering bench. You had to swap croissant and pain au chocolat for cinnamon rolls. <laughs> and you had to leave behind the deux parties, deux sous parties approach to discover the joys of research papers. Congratulations for that again. Definitely, some of these uh, experiences have obviously been deeply impacted by the pandemic. And you, graduates, have in particular suffered so greatly. This incredible challenge forces us to completely reinvent, together with you, the way to deliver higher education in a very short time frame. And we are very grateful for all of your understanding, your engagement during this very difficult period of time. Sciences Po and Columbia University are now a fundamental part of your identities, and the skills you have developed over the past four years have given you a keen sense of critical observation. Our two universities together share nearly 420 years, 420 years of heritage. This is an exceptional legacy for you to carry forward. From the Parcours Civic to the Columbia Corps, this dual degree granted you the tools necessary to play an essential part in the challenges and opportunities that we, as higher education institutions, have the responsibility to address. I'm thinking about sustainable global development and energy transitions, and I'm thinking also about fighting inequalities. I trust you to take on those ambitions in order to ensure a significant impact on our societies. This is our common DNA. The time now has come for you to get out into the world. I encourage you to commit yourselves to a life of intellectual growth, impact, and curiosity. I also encourage you to be the changing force that the world needs and that your academic training allows you to be. Thanks to you, the light will shine in the darkness. Graduates, the future is yours, the world is yours. Thank you. Thank you, President Vissera. It is truly a testament to the strength of our partnership and the shared pride we have for our students and graduates that you are here with us today. Now I would like to extend a very special welcome to our incredible class day speaker, Dea Gracias Nizo Kiziza, class of 2001. I'm gonna call you Deo, if that's okay. Deo is the founder and CEO of Village Health Works and a leading advocate for some of the world's most impoverished and vulnerable people. Born in rural Burundi, Deo fled when his medical studies were interrupted by a catastrophic war. He moved to New York City, where he survived homelessness and eventually enrolled at Columbia GS. After graduating, he attended the Harvard School of Public Health and then resumed his medical education at Dartmouth Medical School. In 2005, Deo returned to Burundi to establish Village Health Works, a model rural healthcare system that organization now employs over 700 people and serves a catchment area of over 200,000 people. Village Health Works has created a holistic approach that goes beyond healthcare and education and includes an economic development program, food security, and music and the arts. 
Deo is the recipient of multiple prestigious awards, including the Carnegie Foundation of New York's 2016 Great Immigrants, the Pride of America, the 2016 Presidential Medal from Burundi, a 2015 honorary degree from Arcadia University, a 2013 honorary degree from Williams College, and he will be receiving an honorary degree from Wheaton in just a few days. Please welcome me in, enjoy, in welcoming our esteemed alumni speaker, uh, Dr. Deo Niyozankisa. Thank you, uh, Dean Rosen Mitch, for the beautiful introduction. President Lee Bollinger, Dean Hunkford, members of the faculty and administration, family members, and most importantly, the graduates of the classes 2020, 2021, and 2022. Good morning. And and congratulations. I am truly honored to be with you on this special day in your life. It is a privilege to be back at Columbia, remembering my own cherished teachers and reflecting on all the ways the Columbia community has supported my work since then. When I was a student here, I quickly found in my first year that GS students were truly an incredibly rich library that all the Columbia University community should be required to visit and learn from. I have heard and read some of the best real life stories, the bad and the good, from fellow GS students more than any other group of students anywhere. I didn't share mine when I was here for a number of reasons. One, I was carrying my tragedies like a luggage and was trying to heal from the trauma of war, as well as the humiliating consequences of it. And I didn't want anyone to know about it. Two, I was fluent in only three languages, but I was struggling to learn English for the first time, to use it this time as my new language to communicate and to survive. I was taught in school by Belgian missionaries that French was uh, the only language of the civilized. <laughs> it truly never crossed my mind that I would have a hard time finding people in America who spoke that language of the civilized. <laughs> Was uh, America an uncivilized country? I wondered. You see where I'm heading. Pay attention to what you teach young minds. My early education was about obedience without questioning authority and the rote memorization of stuff that had nothing to do with our immediate life or even our true history. Thanks to my fellow GS student, James, who's not here, who helped me not only with modern English, but the 14th century English in the Canterbury Tales. He even bought me meals using his coupons. I had a hot dog for the first time from him and when he saw me that I was worried, he informed me that there was no dog in hot dog, <laughs> just like there is no egg in eggplants. <laughs> what a life. I would now like to briefly share my story with you. Not because it's more important than anyone else's story, but because it's the story I know best. And because 
It illustrates so dramatically the simple act of caring for a stranger can have consequences more beautiful and more far-reaching than we might imagine. On May 16, 1994, 28 years ago today, I landed at JFK for the first time in the US at the age of 22. I was a medical student and had narrowly escaped death many times during the war in my own country of Burundi and then neighboring Rwanda, which was the only direction I could run. At JFK, an immigration officer asked me where I was from, even though he had my passport in his own hands. I told him that I was from Burundi. He couldn't find Burundi in his computer. And he asked me, are you sure it's not Burma? All I said was, it was Burundi when I left. <laughs> With me, I had only the clothes I wore, $200 in my pocket, and the unspeakable trauma that I had just somehow managed to survive. I didn't know, know anyone in the United States. I spoke no word of English. I didn't know, know which of my family and friends were still alive. It is the history we have sadly seen repeat itself too many times and too many places. I end up living in Central Park, just right here, during those first months. I joined the invisible workforce, delivering groceries for $1 an hour. Always hurried along the dark service entrances, the groceries felt heavier than my own weight. I taught myself English, tried to cling to my humanity and to make sense of it all. It's likely that I wouldn't be standing before you, able to tell this story, if it were not for the help of people who would be considered strangers. And I use the word with both respect and caution. Respect for strangers because, I would say, they are the source of some of the most profound of human experiences, the beautiful and the ugly. Caution because I am not convinced that we are ever strangers, even when, and perhaps especially when, our otherness is used to justify brutality and warfare. After my experiences of violence, poverty, and displacement, it took a village of strangers to get me back on my feet. When I was homeless, in despair, and finally too weak to walk, it was a social worker at a church where I delivered groceries who hugged me and gave me a hint of hope that I could feel human again. This angel, Sharon McKenna, who remains one of my closest friends to this day, fed me brought me to Medicare care because I was a walking skeleton weighing 90 pounds and being African. The doctor Sharon brought me to see believed that I was dying from HIV AIDS. He was surprised when the test results came back negative for HIV. The doctor had confidentially shared the story with Sharon who kept it to herself for a while I heard that story later. He also recommended that I go to Canada where French was spoken, but I was too tired to go anywhere. I had lost faith in God and had decided to just die where I was. Sharon eventually found me a home. Nancy and Charlie Wolf the couple who end up taking me in were also ordinary people of ordinary means. 
an artist and an academic in midlife. But there was nothing ordinary in the radical act of kindness offering this total stranger a hope. As my stay of two weeks stretched into two decades, we became chosen family. It was great, with great pride, that the celebrated, they celebrated my own graduation from this institution in 2001. And though they are no longer with us, the legacy of their simple but unusual kindness carries on in countless other lives. None of us knew at the time, but these then strangers were laying a critical corner of the organization I founded with my native community when I finally returned to Burundi a decade later. Village Health Works, a grassroots organization that is now 15 years old, provides dignified health care regardless of ability to pay, as well as preschool through high school, education, and programs in agriculture, environmental protection, economic development, music, and arts. Through the process, <laughs> through the process of building Village Health Works, Former enemies, local community members who had become strangers to each other, overcame terrible tragedies and started healing from the trauma of war, cultivating trust and becoming good neighbors and friends again. We rediscovered hope. We remembered how to rely on one another, bound by mutual responsibility, Today, this reliance on each other extends far beyond the community we serve in Burundi, and the community extends far beyond Burundi, including many who are in this audience with us today, and have given themselves to this work in their own important ways. Thank you, President Lee Bollinger, for that lovely lunch you organized for Village Earthworks in your beautiful home years ago. And thank you, Sharon Jacob, for your friendship and compassion. Despite many expected and unexpected challenges, we continue to make progress and are now providing medical care to tens of thousands of people each year. We are able to respond to new challenges such as pandemic, supply chain disruption, and climate change. We are about to open a state-of-the-art teaching hospital, the first of its kind in Burundi. And we are educating a new generation of students, leaders. We draw on the strength of our community to do this, employing over 700 people, including a cadre of community health workers, and using local poetry, song, dance, and drumming to teach our history share health education and a force a sense of connection and a pride. Our campus hosts a demonstration farm and flowers of every color, beauty and vitality, along with healing, bringing dignity and decency where it had been lost. Friends, the place where you were born, grew up, somehow ends up determining the status of your health. Many children do not reach their fifth birthday simply because they have the misfortune to have been born in certain socioeconomic settings. Many humans lose their lives because they have no access to health care where they were born, grew up, or live. COVID-19 has revealed this to all of us, it showed the best of us and also the worst of us. Too many promises have been made, too many promises have been broken. Life doesn't have to be that way. Everything starts with an individual human being. 
Among many other unexpected losses over the past couple of difficult years, the world recently lost a giant in the world of global health and one of my closest friends. <sighs> Dr. Paul Farmer, a Harvard University professor, an infectious disease doctor, anthropologist, and a global health luminary, was a strong believer from day one in what we're trying to do in Burundi with the Village Health Works and a steadfast supporter through the inevitable ups and downs of this kind of work. Paul often spoke of how our field of global health had collectively become socialized for scarcity, meaning that our imaginations for what is possible had grown too small. Ironically, this socialization of scarcity this tolerance for subpar treatment is especially common and especially damaging in the very places that need the biggest thinking, places like my native Burundi. I wonder sometimes, what would happen if more people could see our patients, our students and our community members as their own mothers, children or good neighbors and friends? What outcomes would we want for them? In other words, I wonder if the accepted lack of ambition in my field is a trap for otherness, of distance, of allowing ourselves to remain strangers. Paul used to say that what energized him was doing hard things with friends. His refusal to tolerate the status quo saved millions of lives over his too short career. And it challenged orthodoxy in necessary ways. He argued that there was a normal imperative to think big. He used to say that every night he would go to bed worried about how he would be able to fulfill, fulfill all the promises he had made, and that he would wake up every morning feeling as though he had not made enough promises. As we gather today in celebration, particularly after the unusual years that have shaped your time here, particularly after this, uh, during this pandemic, I am sure that many of you are reflecting on the challenges, both, both expected and unexpected, that you have navigated to get to this point. It is a truly an honor to share this moment with you, a time to honor those who have helped us along the way, both those who can be with us today and those who cannot. And it is a time to think boldly about what promises we hope to make to each other next. On your graduation, my collective wish for us is that we each do our part to reduce what makes us strangers, and that we grant ourselves permission to be as ambitious as the problems in front of us demand that we are. However you choose to use your own talents and interests, I wish you the joy and also the struggle of doing hard things with friends. And I wish for you to know that a simple act of kindness, however small it seems in the moment, can ripple out over space in a time in ways that are hard to guess. You cannot bring the whole world to Columbia University with your education and humility. However, you can bring Columbia University to the whole world if you see the world as one humanity and have the courage to act. You can make a difference in the world, especially in the lives of those who are invisible and others we often see and yet perceive as less human than others. 
with a shared responsibility, shared accountability, real solidarity, and the faith in each other, I believe we can together make the future a bright one. It is essential. Thank you for allowing me to be with you on this special day. Enjoy it. And may you embrace your next chapters with boldness, kindness, and hope. Congratulations. Thank you, Dale, for sharing with us your GS story and inspiring us, bringing tears to many eyes, and we cannot thank you enough. You will always make this day a memorable one for us all. Um, every class day is special in its own way, but this year's celebration really has a unique place in our school's history as we are celebrating for the first time bringing three graduating classes together. And as is true for all of us, um, the COVID pandemic has impacted the personal lives of GS students and their families in unexpected and sometimes tragic ways. But this global moment also left its mark on the very essence of what it means to be a Columbia student. Our next speaker was selected by a special committee to offer reflections of this shared experience of working to overcome the challenges of finding successes and graduating during the pandemic. Joining us today to represent the classes of 20 and 21 is Allison Alley Block, GS Class of 2020. <laughs> Alley is a professional ballet dancer originally from Cleveland, Ohio. At GS, she studied psychology while continuing to dance and was an active member and leader in the Columbia Ballet Collaborative. She was the salutatorian of the class of 2020, elected to Phi Beta Kappa, and currently works as a research assistant at the Boston College School of Management, where she is studying professional ballet dancers in the workplace, mental health, and organizational culture. Ali continues to dance professionally with the Iglesky Ballet, in addition to freelancing with numerous companies. Thank you, Ali, for being here today. Thank you, Dean Rosenmetsch. Good morning. President Bollinger, Dean Rosenmetsch, esteemed Columbia faculty, administrators, family, friends, alumni, and the Columbia General Studies graduating classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. It is an honor and a privilege to be standing here today addressing the classmates and faculty who have shaped so much of who I am. I spent years picturing my graduation day, the ceremony, the speeches, the words of wisdom. It was never the pomp and circumstance for me, but rather the feelings of the day that I imagined. I've always been a sucker for the nostalgic, for the emotional milestones in life. I came to class day every year to revel in the joy of my graduating classmates' accomplishments and to imagine the excitement to come when it was finally my turn to don the baby blue cap and gown and receive my diploma. My musings about my future graduation extended beyond the day itself and on to the months to follow. Once I had established that my graduation semester would be spring 2020, I realized that not only would I be ending a huge chapter of my life as a Columbia undergraduate, but also I would be hitting another major life milestone, turning 30. As a professional ballet dancer, 
Turning 30 can signify that major life transitions, most notably retirement, may follow in the decade to come. I tried to emotionally prepare myself for these intersecting life transitions and to avoid the inevitable existential crisis that these transitions might bring about. Jump to March 2020, when it became clear that not only would spring 2020 signify the end of an era at Columbia and of my 20s, but also the beginning of a global catastrophe. In the last two years, everyone the world over has faced immeasurable challenge. Whether we have lost loved ones to the virus itself, lost relationships through the tension of difficult times, lost jobs, or felt at times as if we were losing our sense of purpose, nobody has moved through these few years without experiencing loss. Given all these factors, the existential crisis I was expecting was becoming all the more inevitable for me. Except, remarkably, it didn't come. Over time, I have come to realize why these life changes did not affect me as greatly as I had expected. It became clear to me that Columbia had changed my perspective and my belief in my own ability. GS gave me an education, a home base, and beautiful friendships. But the biggest gift that GS gave me, and I believe so many of us, is a sense of who I am and of who I want to be in this world. Columbia gave me a vision, a voice, and a foundation, and helped me recognize within myself an ability to work for change. This is why, when the pandemic and life changes hit, I was able to hold more firmly to a sense of who I am. While the world around me has changed, I still know that I carry with me the core values, the capability and adaptability, and the vision in life that I developed through my time here. We have all experienced unforeseen challenge in the past two years, but what we have not lost is our connection to an institution that, from the day we set foot on campus and in every ensuing moment, has asked us to confront challenges in the classroom and beyond with courage. Columbia has given us the tools to think critically and to identify how we can bring forth our passions and skills to find solutions. Perhaps most significantly, Columbia has enabled us to recognize within ourselves an ability to adapt and persevere in challenging contexts. These three graduating classes have found ourselves in a difficult time to graduate but we have also landed in an important time to graduate. Has this moment not called on us to bring forth the very skills that we have been developing at Columbia? The world desperately needs these graduates who come prepared to face challenge head on. I fully expect to see my classmates changing the world in every sector. But beyond their accomplishments, I mostly anticipate with great pride that my GS friends will continue to espouse the values of liberal arts education as we live our lives and pursue our individual paths. Many of us here today have already begun our post-Columbia journeys, while others are just about to begin. All of us will hold firmly to what our Columbia education has instilled in us, the values of critical questioning, voicing our opinions, and advocating for what is right and just in this world. These are the values that shape who we are, and that, regardless of our life circumstances, will continue to shape our identity as good people, change makers, and global citizens. When we look to the future, we are always faced with uncertainty. Yet no matter how the world around us changes, we can hold on with certainty to the perspectives and values that we have developed at Columbia. As a result of our experiences over these past years, we will be more capable and adaptable in the face of change. To my amazing classmates, 
I am immensely proud of you for all you have accomplished here at Columbia and beyond. But I am more proud of the resilient individuals being honored today because I know that you will go out into the world and carry with you the values and convictions necessary to bring forth progress. To the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022, may we forever carry into this ever-changing world the tenacity, growth mindsets, values, and mission of the Columbia School of General Studies. Lux in tenebris lucet, the light that shines in the darkness. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you so much, Ali. I would like to welcome to the stage your 2022 salutatorian, Rose Kim. Born in Philadelphia, Rose considers both Pennsylvania and South Korea her homes. After high school, Rose studied at Pitzer College, where she worked in a research lab studying the properties of fungus growing ants. She took some time off school to work, travel, and volunteer before enrol enrolling at GS in the fall of 2020. At GS, Rose chose to pursue linguistics and became interested in the intersection between gender inequities and language. Outside of class, she worked as a teaching assistant in the linguistics department. Rose graduates today summa cum laude Phi Beta Kappa with a degree in linguistics. After graduation, she hopes to combine her love of biology, linguistics, and helping others into a career in speech pathology. Congratulations, Rose. Ooh, okay. <laughs> President Bollinger, Dean Rosenmetsch, Faculty, administration, staff, family members, and most importantly, my fellow graduates. We are here on this lovely day to celebrate the GS graduating class of 2022, the classes of 2021 and 2020, and their accomplishments. And for the first time in two years, we are here to celebrate in person. Here, in New York, part of the ancestral and traditional homelands of the Lenape people, who were displaced when European settlers colonized the land of Manhattan, or what we call Manhattan. I'd like to take some time to recognize the relationship of the Lenape people with this land and acknowledge that we are on land that has been the site of great injustice and violence. As a 22-year-old, I don't have much wisdom to impart to you all. All of the best graduation speeches that I saw while preparing for this one were by people with much more life experience. Steve Jobs, Michelle Obama, Meryl Streep. The last time I graduated five years ago from high school, I went around trying to share with younger students advice that more or less sounded like a PSA. Don't do drugs, kids. Study hard. Yikes. Uh, whatever words I will be leaving you all with today will no doubt make me want to curl up and hide in a couple of years. But that's life. You do things, you grow, you cringe, and repeat. So here goes. Coming back to campus this school year and interacting with others after over a year of Zoom school was exciting, but also extremely overwhelming going from taking class alone in my room to taking a class with 300 people was a shock, to say the least. I was intimidated because it seemed like everyone else had no problem transitioning back to making small talk with their classmates. However, as I slowly reacclimated to a live classroom setting, I realized that I was not the only one struggling to remember how to have an in-person conversation. As a people-oriented language enthusiast who loves studying how people express themselves, 
I was very intrigued by this, specifically with how people failed to recognize the importance of what us linguists would call register. In linguistics, register refers to how a person speaks differently in different contexts. For example, someone on a dating app this year asked me for, quote, some time on my calendar to, quote, connect. He used a formal work register in a context where he, sh he should have used a casual one, hence making things sound very odd and causing me to lose any and all romantic interest. <laughs> but I could understand where he was coming from. The pandemic and doing everything virtually blurred the lines between school, work, home, and social spaces. We no longer had physical cues to clue us into which registers we were supposed to be using. During the pandemic, I made friends by reaching out to them via email, a domain I usually associated with formal registers. But because I started using email for social communication and not just work, I would confuse the two and come close to accidentally addressing my professor as bestie. <laughs> Hence, part of what was so overwhelming about returning to in-person school was relearning how to fluidly and instantaneously switch to the right register. I still have times when I struggle with knowing the right register to speak in, but I have found that what has helped me the most with in-person communication is reminding myself that we are all human, recognizing that we are still in a pandemic, and acknowledging that people have lives and relationships outside of the ones that I see and know. And then, using words to validate and appreciate these lived experiences. I found that I understand, take your time, and thank you are phrases that might not sound like much, but go a long way towards establishing trust and empathy, which are central to any healthy, long-lasting relationship. I realize words aren't going to solve all of the world's problems. The debate on words versus action is centuries old, as evidenced by sayings like, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, and the pen is mightier than the sword. But I'm not interested in this argument. In fact, I think they missed the point. The point is not that language is or is not more powerful than force. The point is language allows you to create opportunities and cultivate communities. My time at Columbia has helped expand my linguistic repertoire and many of yours. And so I hope, dear graduates, that you will use these words and skills to help you find the best opportunities and communities as you continue on your journey through life. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations, uh, Rose, again on all your accomplishments. Um, now I will highlight a few of our key student awards most of our student academic prizes and leadership awards were given at a special ceremony earlier this month. Congratulations to all of our amazing GSers. Each year, the alumni key is awarded to a senior who has achieved distinction both academically and through service to the undergraduate community. I want to thank the GS Alumni Association co-chair, Damien Harfouche, who's going to come up here, class of 2014, and a parent of a Sciences Po dual degree student, for being here to help me present the award. Before I announce the class 22, 2022 winner, I want to acknowledge the 2020 and 21 winners. The 2020 Alumni Key winner was Jessica Krejci, and the 2021 Alumni Key winner was Safia Southie. <laughs> Safia, could you stand up? The 2020 Alumni Key Award goes to Jarrell Daniels. Uh, 
Okay, is Jarrell here? Okay, there he is. Come on up, Jarrell. <laughs> Jarrell is a native of the Bronx and is a tireless advocate for people. And I see Jarrell's family. Are they back there? It, and a tireless advocate for people impacted by the justice system. In 2019, he gave a world-famous TED Talk that highlighted the circumstances that led to his six-year incarceration. This year, he also was awarded the, Sor the Soros Justice Youth Activist Fellowship to develop and launch the Justice Ambassadors Program at Columbia's Center for Justice, which, by the way, which, by the way, I want President Bollinger to hear this, has just been deemed a Columbia World Project. <laughs> Jarrell is a co-developer of the psychology course Frontier of Justice with Professor Geraldine Downey and Ayana Soret. And has been a key member of the GSDEI task force. He was the incumbent recipient of the Renee Plessner Scholarship and for his many academic and service contributions, Jarrell was selected as a 2021 recipient of the prestigious Truman Scholarship Award. Jarrell graduates with a double major in sociology and African American and African diaspora studies. Next, he plans to work for a year and then pursue law school. Congratulations, Jarrell, on being the 22 alumni. GS is truly the best school. We've got the best students. I am pleased this year to present the sixth annual Campbell Award. The Campbell Award is given to a student from each school who shows exceptional leadership and Columbia spirit as exemplified by the late Bill Campbell, Columbia College Class of 1962, Teacher College Class of 1964, Chair Emeritus of the Board of Trustees and co-founder of the Columbia Alumni Association. I would like to invite our winners from the past two years to stand and be acknowledged. The 2020 Campbell Award winner was Rachel Bartlett Ballou, and the 2021 winner was Jonathan Criswell. And now, this year's Campbell Award winner is presented to Michael Higgins. Hailing from Newark, New Jersey, Michael is the co-founder and chair of the food pantry at Columbia. As a leader of the food pantry for the past several years, he has been influential in bringing the issue of campus food security to the forefront, even in the Wall Street Journal, and ensuring the food pantry serves students across all of Columbia's schools. Michael's senior thesis focused on food insecurity within the Ivy League. He graduates with a degree in urban studies with a specialization in geographic information systems. He is the recipient of the inaugural Columbia Alumni Association Scholarship. This fall, he will begin the nonprofit management program at Columbia School of Professional Studies, as well as begin working for 
a nonprofit organization that in New York that is centered around combating food insecurity. Congratulations, Michael, on all your accomplishments. I now am going to turn over the stage to your amazing, incredible Dean of Students, Dean Marlon Delva. Good morning. I'm Marlon Delva, the Dean of Students at the School of General Studies. Distinguished faculty, dedicated staff, honored alumni, family and friends of graduates, it is my pleasure to present to you your candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the School of General Studies class of 2020, 21, and 22. Each degree candidate will receive a certificate of achievement from President Bollinger and will pause briefly to be photographed with Dean Rosen Metch. Kirstie Jardine, GS class of 2015, and co-chairs of the GS Alumni Association will present each graduate with a GS alumni pin. Wear this pin with pride and let it serve as a reminder of your academic achievement and the time you spent at GS. To the wonderful, supportive, and vocal family and friends who have gathered here today, I humbly ask that you show a little restraint in your celebrations as the individual graduates are presented on stage. We would not want to have one's family excitement drown out the presentation of another. I promise there will be plenty of opportunity for rousing applause, so thank you so much for your understanding. With a few exceptions, the graduates will be presented in alphabetical order. I'm sorry I'm speaking so quickly, but we're, we need to beat some time. Um, and so therefore, the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, we shall begin. Let's go. <laughs> Stephanie Grantazek Rocco. Michael Lawrence Dalpini. Jonathan David Criswell. Rachel Ali Balu. Roberto Jose Uribe. Sang Tae Yoon. Safia Sathi. Rachel K. McKenzie Harris. Nicholas Lee. Serengeti Timongua. Michael Higgins. Megan Christine Calderazzo. Lori Louise Paulson. Luisa Raquel Brili da Croce. Jashi Shan. Peter Trevino. Allison Page Block. Rosary Kim. Ashley Elizabeth Kalina. Maureen Laglone. Alexandra Nana. Abido Yasin. Wen Zhang. Tamta Arakhamya. Cole Michael Wagner. Kai Sagal. Hannah Gorels. Carolina Varela. Trevor Lewis Dines. Bridget McKeans Connolly. Daniel Harrick. Paolo Girong Wei. Emily Rachel Simon. Teresa Rondas Cristofaro. 
Jay Sang Yu, Margie Jimenez, Irish Taddad, Carlos, Albert, Carlos Alberto Penuelas Lopez, Minori Camille Ito, Robin Yu, Rian Tan, Blythe Elizabeth Edwards, Victor? Okay. Victor, okay. Victor Black, <laughs> Natalie, Patri Natalie Patricia Jimenez Rivera, Ato Seme, Charles Kuronziza, Kimberly, Kimberly Daniel Ghani, Jolene Marie Singh, Angelina Marie Hines, Aaron Joseph Pickard, Ray Joseph Abruzzi, Sophia Margaret Wisinski, Cedric Kim Blue the Second, Jason Dennis Guzman, Jenna Marie Rockerby, Alvaro, Alvaro Simon de Loviera Neto, Maggi Diop. Adrian Brooke Burfield, Kristen Nicole Maganata, Andrea Elizabeth McKnight, Albert, Albert Philip Antomate, Bobby Glavin, Zach Jonathan Martin, Logan Everett. Haley Rebecca Woods, Matin Simcha Malki, Malka, Katya Cantor, Douglas DiCagno, Viviana Dolores Evans, Daniel Joseph Peralta. And Anthony Patrick Salom, Myrick Hans Lenner, Jesus Manuel Velez, Christopher Edward Morris, Maria, see? Imerich. Maria Teresa Imerich. Connor McCourt Abamonte, Megan Amsalam, Mohuddin Mohammed Almaguer, Rose Erin Aiden, Sejal Altolo. Al Edison Fabian Aguinaga. Timor? Timor Emre Sivan. Hayat? Hayat Al Jawani. <laughs> Daniel Josue Agueta. Hmm? Kisad Abran. Miriam Amalgaldieva. Emily Ann Adana. 
Jacob Lyndon Alexander. Nazir Abdul Salam. Melody Ashby. Magnus Aaron Clayton Robinson. Elizabeth Hills Bush. Kristen Botros. Misa Ashab Jones. Carol Louise Michelle Jenny Ashby. Ace Abregmanov. Laura Ella Alpert. Oleg Alba. Elliot Antoine. Paula and Paula Anna Agamar. Oli Barkay. Noah Amzalag. Fatma Belkihira. Alexander Bieldi. Stephanie Bernal. Omar Shafiq Amashi. Jerome Brackens Jr. Stella Bao. Uma Ba. Ben Ben David. Nelida, Nelida. Nelida Ayakashli. Matthew Franklin Brown. Joana. Spanish, right? Okay. Joan Ruel Bolanos Martinez. <laughs> Joseph Benjamin Barber Bear. Carolyn Grace Absey. Joshua Michael Absey. Johnny Isaac. Rachel Alexis Boschenko. Olim Bakrahanov. Constant Bonin. Anna Barrera. Clara Binov. Lucia? Lucia Bastera. Anna, Anna Buckley? <laughs> Justin Bogoslavsky. Aya Bulmarov. Ali Ben Ramden. <laughs> Catherine Bibolori. <laughs> Anthony Rodrigo Bright. <laughs> Cameron Balkin. Tamara Brenner. <laughs> Jonathan Bothman. <laughs> Benjamin Luis Blefield. Michael Chen. Gabrielle Rose Barber. James Edward Chapman. Michelle Capuno. Jean-Pierre Bouvet. Maroussia Berger. Charlotte Berhens. Caitlin Quinn Buckley. 
Sylvia Chavez Barden. Tony Britvec. Benjamin Elias Braithwaite Vaquerano. Julie Ann Bishop. David Erskine Arthur Carter. Thomas Michael Cochran. Lenny Chotti. <laughs> Sinet Shalel Shalagat. Zachary Allen Commons. <laughs> Madeline Mary O'Malley Covino. <laughs> Samuel Bailey Caldwell. <laughs> Benjamin Dimitri Clark. Hyobin Choi. Paola? Paola? Paola Cruz. <laughs> Yuri Allen Catton. <laughs> Antonio Cosillo. <laughs> Gabrielle Klinger. <laughs> Michal Rose Chartok. Joseph Verano Kushner. <laughs> Anthony Chow. <laughs> Julia Chen. Archit. Archit. Archit Chowdhury. <laughs> hmm? Just Mika? Okay. Mika Dan Chow. <laughs> Jennifer Chen. <laughs> Ryan Chen. Ian William Christensen. <laughs> Zan Karahara Kong. <laughs> Natalie Semino. <laughs> Hualing Chen. <laughs> Alex Chang. <laughs> Scott Arthur Kamisa. Mackenzie Liam Collins. <laughs> Paolo Neto. Tom Cohen. <laughs> Marie Blanche Castanet. Helena Mary Clark. Andreas Chang. Carmen Schwang. Lok Yan Chan. Last name? Marcus Chuyu Chang. Mustelier? Emily Carrero Mustelier. Frederick Amani Cordova. Lucas Michael Carrion. Jesse Paul Cheever. Edward Bernard Conroy. Carolyn Christensen. Colgat? Colgat? Okay. Rachel Elizabeth Colgat. Sophia Cronin. Kai Chang. Silam Chang. Hui Yu Shang. Leticia? Leticia. Leticia Melanie Manon Kamane. Nathaniel David Cruz. Norvell? Ace Norvell Cook. Avalon Dimitri. Siri Dalka. Samir Singdral. Delacour. Tristan Delacour. Benjamin Ben Yaman Dahan. Owen Patrick Dougherty. 
Nicole Honing Chung. Your time during. Luna Chia Damiani. Ines Marine Marine Del Fulpian. Bianca Rose Dominguez. Amanda Elizabeth Dudis. Brian Hines Dionarin. Adrian Camacho. Celine Jean Ziadizio. <laughs> Leopold Dubriel. Pierre Chardot. Mona Pavlin Dimitrova. Mirabel Claire Marie Fille de Lucette. Ophir Diane. Yappe Damberg. Yeah. Eric Dang. May Louise Detel. Zoe Dressner. Isaac Daly, Maxwell Donaldson, Dave Dernfeld, Rashid Desad, Jarrell Edward Daniels, Liam Alistair Collins, Ellie Frith. <laughs> Kelly Allison Flood. <laughs> Elias Pierre Freneris. <laughs> Pierre Antoine Forte. <laughs> Abigail Taylor Edwards. Shira Alfasi, Andrea Enriquez, Philip Diab, Gauthier Eli, Raul de la Espriel. Daryl Delaney. Esquer? Jose? Jose Francisco Esquer. Taylor Eval. Hello? Mikhail Hello. Matthew McGarry. Taj Felix. Eloise Gary. Jeremy John Giffen. Mark Jerko. Anastasia Gradova. Juan Gan. Emma Framont. Audrey Olivia Foots. Juliana Froze. Aman Faisal Boy. Virginie Feist. Myra Friedman. Isra, Isra Eldasugi. Joseph Favia. Jeanne Freal. Jeremy Farber, Bettina Neal Gleason, 
Eri Florent Guerrero Herrera. Ilan Ganeles. Matilde? You want the whole name? Okay. Matilde Grandi. Alexandra Gayard. <laughs> Brian Anthony Garcia. Yolan David Gordon. Whitney Leigh Fuller. Caitlin, Caitlin Jemay Falk. Sumar Frejat. Chelsea Fasano. Gavin Green. Anna Christine Gergen. Emily Ann Garfunkel. Noam Galinsky. Dario Gentiletti. West Gibson. Pamela Guardia. Victor Javier Garnica. Ru Russell Gershev. Christopher Goldsmith. Shelby, Shelby and Gutlaber. Avery Gaines. Catherine Melissa Gutierrez Rios. Julia Dewey Hewitt. Al Olivia Raymond Hartzell. Eitan Rafael Hoffman. Tamara Dina Hoffman. Matan Hillman. Daniela Beatrice Lang. Gupta. Nick Gupta. Bibka Gala. Ariella Goldman. Andrew Massengill. Adana? Adana Hardal. Rafaela Heath. Hmm? Sewa Humphreys. Katerina? Katerina Hagasvin. Paige Ann Hinckley. Hogan. Brandon Hogan. Woo! Claudia Rose Hester. Patrick Haran. Joshua Hamand. Nida Zara Hassan. Prakar Gupta. Sam Elliott Hirschgold. <laughs> Dion Hazel. Tate? Tate Adam Hewitt. Alexandra Grounds. Woo! Lucas Robert Fernandez. Woo! Matilde Husbeam. Megan Elizabeth Goldberg. Ariana Cole Hartnell. Will Robert Harran. Sterling, Sterling Hooten. Kate Hahn. Amanda Hoyos. Haram Hahn. Philippine? Philippine Anne Marie Charlotte Hubert de Fraise. Alexei Igumnov. Corey? Corey Han. Derek Hammack. Singyun Han. Joy Hu. Alexandria Margaret Hall. Devin Elizabeth Hall. Samar Hassan. Isaac? Isaac He. Middle 
Scott Ingleterra. Micah Israel. Kutaiba Ildibi. Kevin Hymas. Maxwell Jakubowicz. Eleanor Jander. Maya Judy. Isadora Carton. Bar Halperin. Chantel Marie Hover. Say it again. Swan Tet. Brett Hufford. Erica Michelle Hernandez. Hannah Pearl Hammer. J. Byron Hopkins. Michelle Herr. Christina Hajipakov. Raymond Jelani. Lance Allen, Lance Allen Jubel. Sangu? Sangu? Jian? Sangu Jian. Griffin Alexander Jones. McColl? Yeah. Allison McColl Kerner. Lucia Yopag. Hayana Lorraine Nelson. Ido? Ido Leon. Emily Rose Irwin. Alan Amar. Marie Chriselle Isip. Daniel Hamahi. Olivia Rose Kirschkowitz. Astrid Huig Hanaraka. Eric Scott Holmes. Woon Jun Kang. Jordan Alexandra Kelly. Sun Young Kim. Son Young Kim. Reed Kessler. Claude Nobler. Kelly Emily Kwong. Ryan Jarjura. Mads Christy Jensen. Rose Sylvie Jacobs. Michael Thomas Durrell. Lucy DeVoe Jeffries. Brandon Tyler Giovanni. Ashvin Jagadeesan. Cameron Gordon jo Joyner. Antonia. Antonia Caleb. Ainor Kaishabaya. Nadja Kujaget. Michael Kalt. Michael Vishislav Koldayev. Junghyang Kim. Jimena. Jimena Karina Laser. Ellen Liu, Justine Lee, Ohad Klopman, Talia Josephine Gal Calter, Jeremy Saul Kohler, Ariel Liana Katz, Gabrielle Carl, Lisa Dion Zhang, Heyoung Zhang. Teho Jean, Arnold Kim, Simon Robert Eric Haltmo, 
Tebow Cup. Andrew Thomas Jones. To you quick. Ismael Lalu. Noah Noah Lijasal. Daniel Khan. Paul. Give me the whole name. Paul Ishwin Gorjabor. Jane Alexandra Kirby. Sabrina Carr. Reese. Reese Kanap. Anna Teresa Kunzi, David Ji Hoon Kim, Sar Bell Lively, Imogen London, Driss Longo, Sixteen Lion, Elena Lomako. Eric Lunzer, Matthew Evan Linsky, Kenton Broadfoot Kilmer, Michael Kemet, Benjamin Kolber, Roy Labash, Pei Kun Ku. Jum, jum, jum. June Kim. Christina Shabukashi. Simone Sahan Kim. Matthew Robert Lauderot. Kyle Vincent Ramsey Lopes. Christopher Jamal Lee. Veronique? Veronique Manfredini. Nada Merhada. Olivia Lim. Jessica Binley. Jacqueline Leslie. Matteo La Rosa. Ethan Ariel Lewis. Young Soo Kim. Junie? Junie? Junie Kim. Noah? Noah? Noah Barron. Marie Michelle. Marie Michelle. Nastasia? Nastasia. Nastasia Myers. Jiyun Moon. John Mortimer, Harold Mama, Zachary Ian McIntyre, Carolyn Holly Marriott, John Joseph Masick, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan Lopez, Lodo, Joseph Lodo. Lourdes Loveri. Nico Long. <laughs> Fernando Luna. Tao? Tao Liu. Pierre Levine. Julia Faye Munoz. Paul, Paul Morande. <laughs> Jacob Mazzarella. Johannes Magotsky, Charlotte Munson, Mirta Mas, Jonathan Maldonado, Avnish, Avnish Mehra, Jane Ellen Lochman. Brian Lorito, 
Frank Lee. Bryce Liu. Yang Lee. Chris Yishan Lan. Sam David Landa. Robert Michael Lynch. Xavier Medina. Rachel Fanny Markovich. Amalia Rose Mayorga. Gershom Miranda. Alicia Diana Moisen. Stephanie Michelle Main. Last name, last name. Tamar? Tamar? Tamar Mussolini. Chloe Marie Mariotti. Mary. Edwin Francisco Monsanto. Edwin Francisco Monsanto. Patrick Thomas McCartney. Andre Mutavov. Jacob Ryan McLamar. Paul Joseph Rybert Lee Heloko. And Lostanu. Zhang Dun Lee. Justin Nice. Lance Michael Nelson. Kuang Zhang No. Madeline? Madeline Johar Nephew. Suzuka? Suzuka Nita. Shinman Nanda. Rachel O. Erica Nieves. Mark Malkin. Daniel Leon Masayev. Meredith Ann Malin. Andrea Pat Patricia Marvin. Catherine McCrinsky. Sarah Catherine McGew. Neve Annie McGlinley. Florence Chantal McElwee. Matthew Ryan Nolan. Beatrice Martins Oliveira. Hey. Esther Oliveira. Oliver. Penny Orban. Eric Patrick O'Connor. Kenichuku Ogbu. Eden Sky Orion. Juan Fernando Martinez. Liam Robert Martin. Aaron Joshua Morell. Yafa Malbaum. Isadora Muscat. George Modekai. Zach Ellis Murdoch. Amber Peralta. Jacqueline Peng. Suni Park. Sean Pradouman. Lucien Paradis. Zadig Perot. Mariana Pradzorova. Carla Puga. Isaac Sidney Ostro. Alejandro Nunez. Andrew Paul Newman. Emiliana Maria Manino. Chaya Malik. Simcha Coleman. Yehudis Moskowitz. Brendan Edward Powers. Jessica Michaeline Hobbs Pfeiffer. Elizabeth Rose. Elizabeth Rice Phillips. Uh, Victor Thomas Polvoni. Bianca Picarella Signori. 
Nathaniel Dusen Padre. Gal Polani. Isabel Padilla Nieblas. Emily Marie Petit. Victoria Obi. Anne Cordova O'Connell. Samuel O. Sarah Obramayova. Yarden Natisia. Linus Marios Nasvites. Zamfira Parinko. Shayna Pearl. Andrea Quijano. Sofia Quintanilla Alvarez. James Sakashi Quinn. Shira Resnick. Carlana Victoria Perla Romoldaldo. Sergio Alberto Pavon Luli. Kevin Carl Peterson. Jonas Jacob Plout. Lillian Del Pravda. Sarah Elizabeth Perez. Ramya Rosalie Pratt. Audrey Taylor Patrick. David Randolph Palmer. Aditya Rashkumar. Roars? Kim Roars. Luke Evan Reback. James Thomas Rice. Christian Rodriguez. Amit. Amit Rejev. Christopher Eduardo Rivera. Yekaterina Poschettina. Henry Glennon Patrillo. Emma Powers. Gabriel Aaron Pont. Karen Liura Pickles. Matthew Joseph Perry. Tadora Ann Lily Rifai. Gaspard Rougier. Richard Shin. Joseph, Joseph Eldon Spieldinner. Emily Catherine Strickland. <laughs> Raul Sabaral. Vanessa Yasmina Suarez. Rahul, Rahul Sandar. Antoine? Antoine Pilon. <laughs> Victoria Hilde Pozzi Roca Belforti. <laughs> Eleanor Hannah Reich. <laughs> Caroline Emmanuel Rice. <laughs> Alexander Milton Pliskin. William Daniel Rodriguez. Fabio Reato. Alexander Stein. Summer Sterling. Chung Yu Sun. Diana Carolyn Serna. Jonathan Schwartz. Jonathan Shorey. Ben Segev. Nicholas Allen Rockwood. Deirdre Cora Newman Radigan. Michael Riley. Ingrid Romero. Karak Ranhawa. Jacqueline Real. Romian Ronin. Kennedy Julian Royce. Grace Siu. Sue Shin. Caroline Lara Staniger. 
Mina Soliich. Zoe Indigo Solomon. Servin Julian Saracek. Mervyn Santa Maria. Christopher Brian Sawyer. Jonathan Levi Silverman. Danielle Ev Sorota. Amanda Camille Steinborn. Mikael Best Schuller. Hannah Nicole Schwartz. Amy Marie Ropart. Ariana Renee Spitz. Olivia Margot Spitz. Francesca Joan Sochelli. Yumi Shin. Ashkat Singh. Halter Shelley. Kovi Simler. Joseph Shinser. No, sorry. Darren Sawan. Lisa Ingrid Julia Sandberg. Yotam Segal. Lee Silverman. Emily Jessica Eliz Elizabeth Sp Spilkley. Cartazinha Maria Skiba. Katya Sharma. Daniel Robert Sendik. Shuen Long. Luigi Alessandro Pastor Pica. Joseph Kalman Taglasi. Alana May Tang. <laughs> Alice Torati. <laughs> Shoshana Shernick. Amy Saar. Adam Storek. Garrett Sams. Aaron Sloan. Shizuku Tsungayawa. Liana Santa Ana. Hanlin Tang. Ina Tinchev. Christopher Thomas. Sean Tu. Roman Ptolemy. Edward Tracy. Zhang Feng Tu. Edward John Tandy. Michael Greg Thomas. Christopher Terrazas. Sasha, Sasha Telfer. Brianna Thomas. Tori Sprout. Danny Harold Siegel. SJ Grace Shaw. He Jin Song. Min Suk Song. Connor Tamara. Sarah, em Sarah Emily Urban. Travis Vidic. Luis Fernando Velasquez Atizana. Dinah Shelly Vidara Abrego. Nadia Vaso. Bjorn? Bjorn Varela. Brenna Webb. Lauren Thompson. Vida Tayebat. Catherine Nora Temple. 
Hayden Joseph True. Martin Anthony Tamalka. Adasa Talab. Vanya Tandon. Paris Taylor. Alexandra Elizabeth Waterbury. Noelani Rose West. Savannah Lynn Wasserman. Lorelai Vass. Alex, Alex Tribble. Verhaden. Patrick Joseph Verhaden. Young Wang. Bradley Michael Wong. Kelly. Kelly. Kelly Paul Valentine. Florence Vincent Dome. Monica Victoria. Yulia. 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 Yulia Vodkovac. James Floyd Van Hess. Bela. Bela Sarah Unger. Lexi Daniel Unel. Bowman. Bowman. Grace Marguerite Bowman Wagner. <laughs> Sophia Marie Ware. Margot? Margot Angelica Wahlberg. Claire Patricia Rose Widman. Bethany Ward. Hannah Walsh. Claudia Kaplan Wolf. Amy Beth Wilder. Chuan Wang. Sian White. Jean, Jean, Jean Thomas. Jean Thomas. Jean, Mar Jean Marin Thomas. Henry Pearson Wolfline. Sylvia Gilson Wan. Daisy Wang. Aaron Z. Simon. Simon Bartholomew Zhu. Hong Fei Jian. Pali Zhu. Yi Chen Yao. Yi Chen Yao. Daniel, Daniel Young. Lingue Wei. Leah Yu. Nigel Yago. Swinga Wong. Lilia Marusiak. Andrew Sung Hang Yi, Stephen Yang, Yi Hu Yan, Chelsea Yost, Madeline Zeichheim, Kaywen Shu, Chu Chi Zhen. Karam Yilmaz. <laughs> Kayla G. Zhu. <laughs> Adrian Jems. <laughs> Alex Yu. <laughs> Crystal Joanna Valentine. Yu <laughs> Pei Yi. Romy Zilka. Tal Iskak Zilka. Fan Zhang. 
And last but not least, Zhang Zhang. I am proud, I am proud to present to you the unique, gifted, savvy, and always inspiring General Studies graduates. Round of applause again, please. Thank you, and please be seated. Let's have a round of applause for Dean Delva for calling all those names. Class of 2021 and 22, you did it. And before we get towards the end, we have to hear from one last student speaker, your valedictorian, Ashley Kalina. <laughs> Ashley is a student in the Jewel BA program between Trinity College Dublin and Columbia University, where the first cohort graduates today. She majored in English literature at both institutions. During Ashley's first two years in the dual BA program in Dublin, she de developed an interest in Irish experimental writing and Gothic fiction, topics she has pursued in her research. Ashley came to Columbia GS um, in 2018 and Trinity and expanded upon her academic interests by pursuing a course of study in digital humanities. Her fluency in programming languages facilitated experiments in computational literary analysis, computational linguistics, and creative projects in e-poetry and mixed media. Last year, Ashley was selected for the Summer Kyoto University Program, a highly selective, short-term, virtual study abroad program she also serves as the digital editor of 4x4 Magazine, a student-run literary magazine at Columbia, and lead editor at the Columbia Journal of Literary Criticism. Ashley graduated summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, and received departmental honors for her senior thesis on the short fiction of Anna Kavan. After graduation, Ashley will work in the publishing industry in her role as a production assistant at Scribner Books. Congratulations, Ashley. <clears throat> Good morning, President Bollinger, Dean Rosenmetsch, esteemed faculty, friends, family, and most importantly, to my fellow graduates of the General Studies classes of 2022, 2021, and 2020. Congratulations. I'm honored and humbled, really, to be here today before you all. I've never given a speech, nor have I ever spoken to this many people. My vague understanding, though, of how this form works the form of the commencement speech, the valedictory speech, and other graduation addresses, is that the speaker positions the graduating students on the precipice of some great divide, some new beginning. Your life starts now. Go and enter the world. This kind of sentiment falls rather short of the needs and accomplishments of the cohort gathered here today not just because the college students that I know are often very adroit citizens of the world, but because it would be misguided to suggest that you, my peers in general studies, have not yet begun to live. You have lived and lived fully, each of you in your own way. As my fellow speakers have pointed out, the paths that lay behind you offer testament to the many shapes that one's experience can take. Some of you graduated years ago. Some of you graduate today. 
You've studied, moved countries, battled illness, been married, been parents, been to war. You've been incarcerated, been unhoused. Many of you have confronted the pervasive inequities of our culture. You've all known trial and tribulation in your own measure, and I'm in awe of you. What a task, then, to imagine what I might offer today to such an immensely capable and worldly group of individuals. As much diversity of experience is reflected in this graduating class, I want to use this occasion to think about what we hold in common, what unites us, we, the students of general studies. So what about us is general? And what about our studies is general? In our GS vocabulary, general indexes a non-traditional college experience. Of us, that much is certainly true, perhaps doubly so given the various new directions that our education has taken during these pandemic years. I myself have been a student at GS for four years, but I've only been here on campus for one of those. And still, I've never felt that the brevity of my tenure in New York has undermined the validity of my membership in the GS community. One of the great strengths of this school and its students is that our outlook on what learning can entail is, by its own definition, flexible and ever-expanding. We define what our education looks like rather than having its criteria prescribed for us. If general means non-specific, another way to think about generality is in the sense of being non-limited, unlimited, without bounds. This is the understanding of the word that I reserve for you all, who have not only overcome limitations in order to be here today, but who, I believe, have poised yourselves to be limitless in the pursuit of your interests and ideals, to continue to be unrestrained in your thought and expansive in your understanding. On a day such as this, it's only right that we look toward the future, not as the start of your lives, but as a time now when you're at last allowed to see what all that you've learned at Columbia will give shape to. Much of your learning, of course, has been scholastic in nature. I honor the truly outstanding work and effort that you've put into the degrees that you're being awarded today. I also want to recognize, though, the learning that you've done quietly or personally, the other knowledges that you've gained. There's a short story I like by the writer George Saunders, wherein a grandfather tells his grandchild, here I quote, Moments like those overhead geese this morning and watching your mother be born. Or that day when all of us hiked out at Point Lobos. Those baby deer, the extremely loud seal, your sister's scarf drifting down, down to that black briny boulder, the replacement you so generously bought her in Monterey, how pleased you made her with your kindness. Those things were real. The hours that you spent in the library were real, as were the nights in club meetings and mornings in the classroom. So too real and important is the bench in the park that you like to sit on in the afternoon that you spent reading what would later become your favorite book, when you split lunch with your friend for the first time, or you realize that you actually really enjoy psychology or environmental advocacy or cycling. We've each been changed by our experiences at Columbia as scholars and as people. The beautiful thing about graduation, though, as with life, is that we now get to change some more. I congratulate you all once again and celebrate your changes still to come. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations, Ashley. Before we conclude our ceremony this morning, I want to take a moment to acknowledge someone who has impacted the academic journeys of all of you. 
in both direct and indirect ways. Our Dean of Academic Affairs, Victoria Rossner, is concluding her tenure. <laughs> is concluding her tenure at Columbia GS this year and will continue on to new challenges and adventures as Dean of the Gallatin School at NYU. Victoria has been a wonderful partner to me, a tireless advocate for our school and you, our students, and she will be missed immensely. We wish you all the best, Victoria, Dean Rossner, and thank you for everything you have done for GS over the years. And now let me say a final congratulations to the graduate classes of 2020, 2021, and 22. Stay standing, not yet, no throwing hats yet. Somehow I think a number of you also dreamed about this day. Your families, Congratulations, loved one, friends, people joining us virtually. You will always, always hold a special place in my heart. Some of us started here together at GS when I started as Dean in January 2018. We have weathered great adversity together, a pandemic and many other challenges. And I have been so proud to witness your resilience and grit in the most difficult moments. I am honored to be your dean now and for years to come as you join our strong Columbia GS alumni community. You embody in a most spectacular way the mission and vision of GS and Columbia. I hope you will stay involved with your Columbia University family far into the future, and I look forward to seeing you all during the coming year's 75th anniversary celebration. Now, I invite you all to continue the celebration of our graduates at the class day reception held on Ansel Plaza. As you exit there, there will be student marshals ready to guide you to the reception, you and your family or whoever's with you today. Since we are all headed to the same place, I ask that our guests remain seated and allow the president's party to exit first. But one last request, I ask all of our graduates to stand and remain in place for a class photograph. I'm gonna come down here with some of our student leaders who are right in the front row to take a class photograph and which we will make available to everyone. And after that photograph, after which our graduates will exit, followed by families and friends. Thank you and congratulations. This concludes the School of General Studies ceremony. Graduate